Welcome to the first part of the module on Android Concurrency Frameworks. In this part, we focus on the pattern-oriented structure and functionality of several Android Concurrency Frameworks, which contain an integrated set of classes that collaborate to provide a reusable architecture for families of related concurrent applications and services, as covered in earlier videos. There are two primary motivations for Android's Concurrency Frameworks. The first motivation stems from accidental complexities of the Android platform which has several design constraints that restrict how concurrent applications and services can be developed, as described at this link. For example, if an application's user interface thread doesn't respond to input within a short time, typically three to five seconds, Android generates an application not responding dialog, which gives users an opportunity to manually shut down a non-responsive application, as discussed at this link. One consequence of this design constraint is that the user interface thread can't block on any operations that may run for an extended period of time. Likewise, non-user interface threads should not directly access components in Android's user interface toolkit, such as structured layout objects, controls, dialogs, and menus, since they aren't thread safe and should be accessed only from the user interface thread, as described at this link. Although the Java concurrency mechanisms covered in the previous module are useful for starting, synchronizing, scheduling, and terminating threads, they're intended for general purpose concurrency environments, hence the need for frameworks that shield developers of multi-threaded Android software from these tedious and error-prone aspects of its design constraints. The second motivation for Android's concurrency frameworks stems from the benefits of concurrency described in this earlier video, such as simplifying program structure to avoid overly complex and tangled event-driven software architectures, increasing performance by overlapping communication and computation to run in parallel on multi-core platforms, and improving responsiveness by processing short-duration user-facing operations in a different thread than other long-duration background operations. As we'll see throughout this module, Android's concurrency frameworks apply many POSA and Gang of Four patterns, including command processor, active object, half-sync, half-async, and strategy, as summarized in this earlier video. A later section in the SMOOC will cover these patterns in detail and show how they're applied in Android's concurrency and communication middleware, as well as in applications and services. To shield developers from concurrent applications and services from the accidental and inherent complexities of Android design constraints, as well as to enhance the software quality attributes summarized earlier, Android provides several concurrency frameworks. These frameworks allow certain computations, typically long duration and blocking operations, to run in background threads, and other computations, typically short duration user facing operations, to run in the user interface thread. For example, the image download application discussed in this video uses an Android concurrency framework to spawn background threads to process long duration blocking operations, such as downloading large images from remote servers. It then uses a synchronized message queue provided by the framework to communicate results from the background threads to the user interface thread, which then displays the image to the user's screen. The user interface thread can also use this framework to pass messages to itself. For example, it can defer certain processing until a designated period of time elapses. Android has two primary concurrency frameworks. One framework consists of handlers, messages, and runnables, which we call the hammer framework, which provides a loosely connected set of classes that allow long duration operations to run in one or more background threads and then publish the results of these operations to the user interface thread, as described at this link and shown by our image downloading application outlined earlier. Another concurrency framework is called async task, which provides a more tightly connected set of classes that execute long duration operations in one or more background threads and publishes the results to the user interface thread without manipulating threads, handlers, messages, or runnables explicitly, as described at this link. Each framework has pros and cons, and both are used extensively in Android's middleware and packaged applications, as we'll discuss throughout this module. The Android concurrency frameworks discussed in this module are built using a number of reusable classes, some of which are directly visible to users, while others are largely hidden below the surface. The design, implementation, and integration of these classes are guided by many POSA and Gang of Four patterns. 
We'll briefly outline the most important classes and patterns used in the frameworks we cover in this module. Some classes we cover are used by both the Hammer and Async Task frameworks. For example, a looper runs a thread-specific event loop that waits for and dispatches messages to handlers, as described at this link. The thread-specific storage pattern covered here is used to ensure there's only one looper per thread. A message queue holds a list of messages to be dispatched by a looper, as described at this link. Android's message queue class applies the monitor object pattern presented here to enable threads to enqueue and dequeue messages concurrently. A message contains descriptions of a message's type or other information and an arbitrary data object that can be sent to a handler via its looper's message queue, as described at this link. Messages are created via a factory method pattern covered here. Messages aren't added directly to a message queue, but through a handler, which allows the sending and processing of message and runnable objects in the message queue associated with a thread's looper, as described at this link. Handlers provide methods that support both the active object and command processor patterns covered here to allow sender and receiver threads to run concurrently. Implementations of the Java runnable interface represent commands that can be executed via handlers in conjunction with the looper class, as described at this link. The async task framework also uses several other classes from the Java Util concurrent package. For example, future tasks can be used to start and cancel an async computation, query to see if the computation is complete, and retrieve the result of the computation, as described at this link. Finally, implementations of the executor interface execute submitted runnable tasks either sequentially or in a pool of threads, as described at this link. The async task framework uses these two classes to implement the half sync, half async pattern explained here, to decouple asynchronous and synchronous processing, to simplify programming, and enhance performance. The classes and interfaces in Android's concurrency frameworks we just summarized work together to embody the three key defining characteristics of frameworks discussed earlier during the course introduction. In particular, they provide inversion of control, where the framework is responsible for detecting the events that occur, multiplexing these events to the corresponding handlers, and then dispatching hook methods on these handlers to perform the intended processing. They also provide integrated structure and functionality targeted at the domain of concurrent programming in Android. Finally, they provide semi-complete portions of concurrent applications that can be customized and completed by inheriting from abstract framework classes and interfaces and overriding hook methods to implement application-specific functionality. We analyze all these classes throughout this module to show how they work, how they interact with each other, and how they're applied in Android. We cover both the interface classes that are visible to application developers, as well as implementation classes that are less visible to application developers. This analysis shows, by example, how software patterns are applied to guide the design, implementation, and integration of Android's concurrency frameworks and applications that use these frameworks. Detailed coverage of these patterns and their application in Android appears later in this module. In summary, Android has several design constraints that restrict how concurrent programs can be developed. For example, it only allows one thread to perform user interface operations per application. All components in the same application process use the same user interface thread to receive system-generated notifications and broadcasts, interact with users, and perform activity lifecycle methods. Since components in Android's user interface toolkit aren't thread safe, they should only be accessed from the user interface thread. Likewise, long duration operations should run in background threads to avoid generating application not responding dialogues if they block for more than a few seconds. To make it easier for applications and services to conform to these design constraints, Android provides several concurrency frameworks that allow long duration operations to run and block in background threads and communicate with user facing operations that run in the user interface thread. One concurrency framework consists of handlers, messages, and runnables, which we call the Hammer framework. This framework allows operations to run in one or more background threads that publish their results to the user interface thread. 
The classes in the Hammer framework are loosely connected, so it's essential to understand the patterns that guide their structure and interactions. The other framework is called Async Task, which also allows operations to run in one or more background threads and publish the results to the user interface thread. Unlike the Hammer framework, however, the Async Task framework doesn't require applications to manipulate threads, handlers, messages, or runnables explicitly. Moreover, the classes in the Async Task framework are strongly connected, which helps simplify the use of this framework since its design has a smaller surface area. Both frameworks apply patterns from the Gang of Four and POSA2 books. In turn, these pattern-oriented frameworks embody idioms that are specific to the Android platform and its concurrency design constraints. An idiom is a pattern that focuses on a particular context, such as development platform, programming language, or design method, as described at this link. In addition to these common frameworks, other frameworks also exist for running computations concurrently on Android. For example, RenderScript is a framework for running computationally intensive tasks efficiently on Android. It can be used to parallelize work across all processors available on a device, such as multi-core CPUs, GPUs, or DSPs. RenderScript is primarily intended for data parallel computations, such as applications that perform image processing, computational photography, or computer vision, as described at this link. RxJava implements the .NET reactive extensions for the Java Virtual Machine and combines data or event streams with reactive objects and functional computation. RxJava events are modeled as streams of asynchronous flows to which observers subscribe. These observable streams can be filtered, transformed, and composed in various ways before the results are emitted to an observer, as described at this link. While these other concurrency frameworks are interesting, they're beyond the scope of this MOOC. So we just focus on the, the Hammer and Async Task frameworks in this module.